Welcome to Industry Insights. Uh, we have uh, with us Ajay Chaudhary. He's the original uh, Unicorn founder. Even before Unicorn was a thing in India, Ajay Chaudhary is the co-founder of HCL Tech. He's also the chairman, Mission Governing Board, the National Quantum Mission of India. Ajay Chaudhary is also the chairman and founder of the Epic Foundation and an author. Welcome, Ajay. Thank you. Right. So, uh, Ajay, um, so we'll uh, we'll have a series of questions for you, but I wanted to start with this uh, very simple question for you. So, tell us about your journey with HCL Tech. How did it start? What was the environment during that time? What motivated you to start that company? So, actually, we all six of us used to work for DCM, mm -hmm. and then we left together to start HCL. And our objective at that time was that the microprocessor was just making its appearance. And why shouldn't we take the microprocessor and change the world? That was our dream. Mm -hmm. And as we got going, we suddenly discovered there were lots and lots of hurdles for us. Mm -hmm. And the first hurdle was we didn't have enough money, yes. obviously. So we started with just about 1.86 lakhs. And we needed to create some extra cash flow. Mm -hmm. So as we were looking to get the company going, we started a little marketing company and we named it after micro, microprocessors, called it Microcomp. Mm -hmm. And we started to actually buy calculators from others and started to market. Mm -hmm. And for, ne for next 12 months, that's what we were doing. But during this period, a lot of work was going on to create HCL. And the first thing that we wanted was that we needed a license to make computers in mm -hmm. India. Those days it was license charge. Yeah. So we went to the government and they said, you're a, you're a very chota company. Why should we bother with you? Mm -hmm. We just can't give you a license. Mm -hmm. So we were really stimmied at that mm -hmm. stage. But then somehow we've discovered mm -hmm. that UP government was sitting with a license. Mm -hmm. So we went and approached them and said, why can't we join hands? Mm -hmm. And it took us a few months and they agreed. Mm -hmm. And we formed a joint sector undertaking. Mm -hmm. We gave them 26% equity. Okay. And we said... We will buy back in five years, mm -hmm. but you get us started. Mm -hmm. So we took that license. And then the first thing that we did was to name the company. Mm. And one of the clear, clear things in our head was that if we are starting India's very first computer company, mm. we must have India in its name. Mm. Mm. So we said we want Hindustan Computers Limited okay. as our name. Mm. And again, we got stimmied because they said Hindustan is only given to large companies. Mm and government companies. You can't get that name. Okay. So then we figured out a way. We said, we are a joint sector undertaking of UP government. Okay. So we got the Hindustan name. Okay. So that was a very important thing because yes. once you have a name like Hindustan Computers, mm. your entry into any customer account becomes mm. very easy. Yes. Because they see this name and they welcome you. Yes. So that's how we got started. Mm. And the first thing that we did was to create our first computer which was a scientific engineering product. Mm -hmm. And we said, scientific engineering is where we should start mm -hmm. because we are all engineers and it'll be easier for us to sell to an uh, institution like IIT mm -hmm. and research institutions. Mm -hmm. So we got R&D started on the product. Mm -hmm. But the challenge was that we didn't have enough money to last that next one year mm -hmm. till the product would be ready. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we did was that, let's go hire the best salespeople mm -hmm. in the country. So we went to I am Calcutta okay. and we said, we want to hire 10 guys. Uh -huh. So we gave them a presentation mm. and the students said, guys, you're going to do something different. Mm. But uh, how do we know you'll last? Yes. So we would prefer to join HUL rather than join uh, mm. HCL. So we said, we are not offering you a job. Yeah. We are offering you adventure. And can you imagine the 10 people that we selected joined? Uh -huh. And that's how HCL got started with the greatest brains in this country. Okay. And that was the beginning of us looking at creating a super sales force mm -hmm. because the product was still not ready. Yes. And our thinking was that if we needed to last, we needed to sell the product on a brochure. Yes. So we created a beautiful brochure. Okay. And we selected the right sales. Yeah. So you may be aware that there's this McClellan's theory which says that there are three needs of people. Yeah. Need for achievement, need for power, need for affiliation. Yes. So we did a test on all the people uh -huh. and we picked up those who had the need for achievement. Okay. And then we trained them to be salespeople. Mm -hmm. And we also trained them how to sell without a product. Okay. So it was like uh, uh, telling them how you go across to customers and convince them. 
so my co-founder arjun malhotra <laughs> said look i'll sell the first one okay so he took that challenge and he went to his alma mater iit kharagpur okay and he sold the first one and he went to tell tell the prof look we are a bunch of young engineers yeah. we are just starting out mm-hmm. we don't have the money and we need business mm-hmm. so we need something from you but they said okay you must deliver before 31st march next okay. year okay and that was the beginning yeah with that one order from iit kharagpur yeah. we went all over the country to every iit and got business okay even without having a product mm-hmm. so that's how hcl got started okay. and looking back when dr seeker prahlad used to teach us yeah. a is greater than r it yes. was really true because if you have the aspiration yes. resources happen yes and that's really what hcl is all about yes it's all about aspiration yes i mean it shows up in the story right yes. you had you didn't have cash and then yes. you went ahead and got that yeah. that resource yes. you didn't have manpower you went ahead and got that from right. iit from the iims um so you know fascinating story yes. so i wanted to follow up saying you know and this was in the 1970s That's right? right starting a business was not easy oh, there was license was... raj and you figured a way out to do it yes. how has that thing changed uh, now well that time there was nothing called startups now of course startups are really welcomed yes so it's a very different situation today yes. from then yes there was nothing called vcs there was nothing called angels there were no banks who were giving loans nothing yeah. so we really had to you know grind our way through yes today of course the situation is brilliant yes. because the government has a startup scheme yes the policies are very nice there are a lot of funding available with incubation centers yes. lots of funding being given by different institutions in uh, by through dst and all the other schemes that are there yes so money is not an issue mentoring is not an issue yes i think the issue is still the same you have to have a great idea yes. and you have to have a great team yes yes okay so um now you know hcl tech is a big company you know it's present in a you know host of industries so how did hcl really scale up like you started this business you went and got these few business from the iits but how did the scaling happen for hcl so, so the you- first thing that we did was that we were looking at a white space mm-hmm. when we started there were just 100 computers in this mm-hmm. country so we saw my god 700 million people 100 computers great market yeah so that was the assumption yes and then what we did was that we had to create the market yes and when you are a creator of the market the benefit is that you become the leader yes so we started to look at what are the reasons why people don't buy computers yes so the first thing that we discovered was that people felt it is very difficult to use mm-hmm. the second thing was uh it's very expensive mm-hmm. and the third thing was that where is the roi yeah so the we create came up with mm-hmm. full page ads mm-hmm. and the first ad read like this mm-hmm. even a typist can operate mm-hmm. and that really opened the flood gates yes and we started to get to create more and more products we mm-hmm. created commercial computers then we created mini computers and in 10 years mm-hmm. from 1976 mm-hmm. to 86 mm-hmm. we became the number one computer company mm-hmm. in india mm-hmm. so that was the scaling that we did in yes. india yes. because we went to literally every corner of the country mm-hmm. and we made computers happen everywhere mm-hmm. but around that period somewhere around the eight, or early 80s itself mm-hmm. uh, there was an opportunity coming up at singapore mm-hmm. so the singapore edb said we want to start computer manufacturing here okay can hcl start here mm-hmm. so i went i was the man on the moon mm-hmm. with my co-founder subhash yes. and we all went to singapore to start manufacturing computers there yes you know it's unheard of that an electronics company from india going and manufacturing mm-hmm. products outside the country yes we did that in 1980 yes. so it's one of those things that are that is very typical dna of hcl yes. we have we do audacious things yes and that was the most audacious thing to do yeah. then we did the next audacious thing mm-hmm. which was take it to america yeah mckinsey came to us yes. very early days they were starting here and yeah. they said we would like to do a project with you mm-hmm. because you are the largest computer company in india yes and mckinsey said uh, we'll do it pro bono for mm-hmm. you. We, because mo- before we could say that yeah. we can't afford you yes. they said we'll do it pro bono mm-hmm. so they gave us a proposal to say how do you enter the united states yes. and they created an entry strategy for us yeah. and they said the product that you've created here mm. is absolutely world class mm-hmm. so and there's nothing like this existing yes take it to the us yeah so we went in the us we set up in silicon valley we started manufacturing mm-hmm. we got our orders also mm-hmm. but there was a 
issue that we had not thought of mm-hmm. fcc regulation mm-hmm. our product was not fcc approved okay and the second problem was mm-hmm. that we got close to about 40 50 million dollars worth of orders mm-hmm. the company that we got the biggest order from got sold yeah so suddenly what we had decided to do yes. didn't happen yeah so it was like a disaster staring at us because yeah. we had taken a loan from icici yes and we just didn't know what to do mm-hmm. that we did a pivot yeah we said okay let's take our capability yeah our capability was designing the unix at a very different level yes so we took that capability and went to all the r and d companies r and d you know units of large companies like yeah. hewlett packard and all mm. and we said we have this great capability mm-hmm. we'd like our engineers to work in your rd mm-hmm. and you can pay us for these engineers mm-hmm. and we got started mm-hmm. it was in a manner a body shopping piece yes. very early days yes. but it was really doing genuine engineering rd work mm-hmm. and that got us pivoted to software yes. and that's how we recovered the yeah. united states situation okay i and this uh, this is interesting uh, because there is there is a story here and there is a there is a lesson here for the startups and we see so many startups you know thanks to the policy we have around um you know come up but the scaling has always been an issue for them so what advice do you have for startups right now when they are thinking about scaling when they are thinking about building profitable businesses so scaling is something that all startups need to look at a particular stage in the life of their company mm-hmm. now we scaled from being a domestic company mm-hmm. to be a global company yes by first of all we very clearly realized that if we just looked at india it won't be good enough mm-hmm. and secondly our import dependence was so high mm-hmm. we needed dollars yeah so we needed a dollar business to compensate for that okay so what we did first was we took our engineering r&d capability yes of our hardware company and converted that into a business mm-hmm. and that is how it was called hcl technologies mm-hmm. because the word technology mm-hmm. came from the whole idea of r&d and engineering etc yeah and we discovered that that was looking like a fantastic market which nobody else was addressing mm-hmm. and that's how we got started yes. but then the scaling happened through another route mm-hmm. which was first thing that we did yeah. was that we wanted to go for a listing yes because we realized that just organically we are not yeah. going to grow okay we needed inorganic growth also yes so in 1990 we decided to yeah. go for a listing yeah but our challenge at that stage was that we didn't have enough enough back orders okay in the united mm-hmm. states and that is our major market yeah so we did something again very audacious yeah we went to about 15 customers and gave them an offer it's like uh, and you know saying uh, we you give we give you an offer you cannot refuse yeah you know? so we went there we gave them an offer we said if you give us a 75 million dollar order mm-hmm. we'll give you equity in the company pre ipo okay and we parted with some of our equity from the founders mm-hmm. and gave that away okay suddenly we had seven customers signing up with 75 million yeah. and we had a great backlog yeah. we went for a terrific listing yeah. we had 23 times of money that we had actually asked for yeah. and yeah. it was the best listing in nsc at that particular okay. stage okay. and that was the first company that was allowed to list with just 10% equity okay you earlier you had to give away 25% uh-huh. but here with 10% we were successful okay that money when it came in yes we were behind the wipros and the infosyses of the world yes. they were far ahead in software yes we were very small in software yes. we were very big in engineering and already yes so we said let's go buy software companies okay so with that money we started to buy companies okay in addition we expanded geographically in the united states then we went to europe etc so the key thing about scaling yes is that you do it in stages yes and you do it with a very clear focus yes on which areas you want to go to yeah so that's where we initially started with engineering and r&d yes then we went and bought companies yes these companies got us entry into customers yes and that's how we started to grow okay. and then of course we did something again uh, you know I remember we was we were, I had I had gone to the Beijing Olympics and yes. me and Shivnader was sitting and having a drink. Yeah. And uh, he got a phone call and he said uh, uh, then he looked at me and says we've lost it. Yeah. So I said what 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 got lost? He says we had actually bid for a very large company in the UK. Mm-hmm. And it was the SAP largest SAP company in okay. uh, UK, in the Europe and we had bid 800 million dollars. Mm-hmm. 
and we lost that bid to Infosys. Mm. And that day, Infosys announced in the market mm. that they bought this company. Okay. So I said, that's a, that's not a real nice thing to happen that mm. losing like this. Yeah. He then said, okay, watch this space. Yeah. I said, okay. Next day we meet and uh, we outbid Infosys. Mm-hmm. And again, we did something audacious. Outbidding is Infosys. Uh-huh. And Infosys didn't outbid us then. Yes. So we got it. Yeah. So that's how we scale. So, you know, not everybody can do these things. Yes. But these are all lessons to take in yes. terms of how to have the gumption to scale. Yes. And the biggest thing in scaling yeah. is having extremely good people. Yes. yes. Because those people have to be deeply connected with the DNA of the company. Yeah. And that's really what makes scaling happen. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to follow up. I think HCL has been profitable from day one uh, when they started. Is that... uh, Not really. Mm -hmm. Uh, Very much early days. Yes. But uh, those days our margins in hardware was 70%. Mm -hmm. Our price of our product was 18 times the price of an ambassador car. Mm -hmm. So obviously we are profitable. Yes. Yes. So, um, and, and if you connect it to today, right? So companies are scaling, but... No real visibility on how they're going to achieve profits. So scaling is going and grabbing market share, hoping that the market share will convert into premium pricing and profit. So is there a lesson as to how HCL grew? Because some of these audacious things that you did would not have been possible if you did not have the cash flow. Absolutely. You have to have a lot of free cash flow as you start to grow. So I think the key problem that I've seen in the last four to five years We've just got carried away with brands, unicorn, Mm -hmm. all these things. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, people have gone only for growth. Mm -hmm. They haven't looked at the bottom line. Yes. And that is something that's a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. Because you need to create an organization Mm -hmm. which is, first of all, Mm -hmm. very, very agile. Mm -hmm. And two, very, very strong on control on spending. Mm -hmm. What I've seen with a lot of startups, when VCs pour money into them, Mm -hmm. the first thing that they do is upgrade their car and upgrade their home. Yes. And that's a disaster. Mm -hmm. You should actually remain the way you were. And then as you grow, sure, you can have a second car or a third car. Yes. Or a very nice home. But grow when you're making money, not when you're just growing for the heck of growing. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and HCL built this you know, this you know, big, you know, global company, right? You know, um, so, you know, there's a trend of, you know, at the same time, there was a trend of international, multinational companies coming to India. Yes. But HCL was going global, right? So, um, um, and you are making products for the world. Your products were, the McKinsey told you, are as good as any other product out there. Um, what advice do you have for startups who are thinking of making products for the world? Because we don't have many products for the world. We have startups, we have a big burgeoning Indian market, uh, but except for a few, uh, we don't really see startup founders make products for the world. So what advice do you have Actually, for that? Actually, uh, HCL moved away from product to services yes. very deeply mm-hmm. because it was very profitable. Mm-hmm. And so our profitable journey on services carried on till about five, seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started thinking product. Mm -hmm. Because we we sort of felt that at some stage, we have to move from services to product. Again, we did something audacious. We went and bought IBM's product business Mm -hmm. for a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And we... Can you imagine those customers were still using Lotus 1, 2, 3, Mm -hmm. seven years ago? And we said, okay, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We will convert a lot of those products. Mm -hmm. We will get a huge bunch of customers as a result. And we will build on this product business. Mm -hmm. So today, HCL is the largest software product company out of India. Mm -hmm. We have $1.4 billion. And we are 18th largest in the world. Mm -hmm. So, you know, products are essential Mm -hmm. because... Products are actual IP. Mm -hmm. And that is what makes a long-term strategy for your company. Mm -hmm. So at one stage, our engineering R&D business is even growing today. Mm. It's huge. And on the other hand, we have this product business. And the other hand, we have the software business. Software, we were not that great at any stage of our company. Mm -hmm. Now we are very, very good. Mm -hmm. But when we started out, 
Wipro and Infosys were ahead mm-hmm. and we overtook Wipro few years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's all about having that comfort in going from services to product. Mm-hmm. And that is the direction mm-hmm. that the country must take. Mm-hmm. Eight to ten years ago, mm-hmm. if I walked into a drawing room conversation, mm-hmm. everybody used to say, mm-hmm. hey, why don't we have a Google or a Microsoft in India? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting thing is that today we have a DPI in India, mm-hmm. which is the best product in the world of its kind. Mm-hmm. You know, so these things are happening in India. Mm-hmm. A movement towards products is mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. And Zoho, as you know, is yes. a billion dollar company. Yes. It's it's all happening. Yes. So I think startups and companies must start to very strongly yeah. move in software products to start with. Yes. And then, of course, in other areas too. Yes. Yes. And obviously, it needs great leadership, yeah. uh, visionary leadership like you yes. know your team there to uh, to make it happen. Yes, of course. Right? Of the course. aspire is first and then comes the resources. Right? Yes, if you don't aspire, right. then the resources will never come that's in. That's right. Yet. Okay. That's right. So, um, I wanted to uh, focus a little bit on the Epic Foundation. Gee. Right? I mean, you, you created electronics manufacturing where there was none. Right? Now, this Epic Foundation has a mission of making India a product nation in electronics. I wanted to understand the aspiration. I wanted to understand the work that you are doing to make it happen. So you see, uh, about uh, 12 years or 12 odd years ago, when I uh, sort of said thank you to HCL and Mm -hmm. said I want to do my next innings, Mm -hmm. I took a view that hardware is something that will be tough to carry on, Mm -hmm. but it must carry on. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, at that stage, when I left, the board took a decision along with the new CEO Mm -hmm. that hardware we should stop. Mm -hmm. Which was, to my mind, a real disastrous Mm -hmm. decision, but the board took that decision Mm -hmm. together. So we sort of continued to do system integration and software, Mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. We stopped doing hardware. Mm -hmm. So two years ago, two and a half years ago, me and Arjun Malhotra, Mm -hmm. the original founders of HCL, Mm -hmm. we came to the realization that not a single Indian brand existed today. Mm -hmm. Whether you look at computing, Mm -hmm. you look at phones, Mm -hmm. you look at televisions, Mm -hmm. everything is Chinese. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not a good thing for this country. Mm -hmm. Because we just can't be dependent on a country like China, which is so unreliable. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we felt that we needed to do something about Mm -hmm. it. So we set up Epic Foundation. Mm -hmm. We brought in a lot of volunteers to work with us. Mm Because our whole objective was that we needed to give back to the country. Mm -hmm. So we went to a lot of XHCL people and Mm -hmm. said, would you like to join us? Mm -hmm. And all of them work for us as Mm -hmm. volunteers. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets paid a salary. Mm -hmm. And they all work because they have the same objective as us. Mm -hmm. Let's make India hardware product Mm -hmm. nation. Mm -hmm. So what did we do as a result is that we first started to work on the government. Mm -hmm. And we said we needed to create policies to Mm -hmm. make this change. Mm -hmm. So... For the last two years, we've been at the central government Mm -hmm. to say, let us create a policy towards making India a product nation. And the logic that we gave to them was that you're setting up fabs here. Who's going to be the customer of fabs? Mm -hmm. Unless we make system products and chip products in India, Mm -hmm. who will buy the chips from that fab? It'll be ready four years later, Mm -hmm. but it can't be cut before the horse. Yes. So they agreed. And earlier this year, we managed to get a task force set up. Mm -hmm. And just yesterday, we completed the job of closing that task force report. Okay. So it's now with the chairman of the task force, which is Professor Sood, who's the principal scientific advisor. Mm -hmm. And from there, it will go to Ministry of Electronics Mm -hmm. and they will take it forward. Mm -hmm. And we are suggesting Mm -hmm. a very aggressive plan Mm -hmm. for making products. So one of the things that we have done, Mm -hmm. we've identified products that we must make. Mm -hmm both in systems and chips. Mm -hmm. So we've actually asked the government for an audacious 42,000 crores. I said, put this money and you will get, you'll see results in five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. We will be able to save many times more Mm -hmm. from imports because today we are totally import dependent Mm -hmm. on China. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good thing when China sitting Mm -hmm. at Galwan and giving us trouble. We are increasing our imports. As a matter of fact, I wrote many years ago, that our electronics bill will be higher than the oil mm-hmm. bill. Mm-hmm. And it's happening. So this is the thing, first thing that we did. Mm-hmm. The second thing that we said was, e-waste is a very major problem mm-hmm. in the country. We are the second largest e-waste piece in the, in the, mm-hmm. in the country. And sustainability is an area that we must take care of as a country. 
سو وی ورک ود دا کنزیومر افیئرز منسٹر وی پرو بونو روٹ اے رپورٹ فار دیم آن واٹ شوڈ وی ڈو ٹو چینج دس اینڈ وی سیٹ دا ایشو بہائنڈ اٹ از دیٹ پیپل ڈو ناٹ ریپیئر پروڈکٹس اینی مور اٹس اے یوز اینڈ تھرو مینٹیلٹی وچ از اے ویری ویسٹرن مینٹیلٹی اٹس ناٹ دی انڈین مینٹیلٹی بٹ وی لرن دا رانگ تھنگس even a toothbrush we never show, you know throw away mm-hmm. we use it for something else yeah. so we started to work on this and we said we must create a policy yeah. which is right to repair and that right to repair phase 1 has been done a, a pilot was done a, 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 a online piece has been created by the consumer affairs ministry two things have happened mm-hmm. one we managed to get usb c standardized for all products mm-hmm. so by end of this year everybody has to go by that okay can you imagine how easy it will be for you at the airport yes. when you just have to carry one charger absolutely we don't so, need those big yeah, airtel yeah, kiosks right? yeah. so all those things are changing yeah and the next thing we are after is to get the right to repair law made mm-hmm. and that is what we are working on mm-hmm. now okay. so that's the second piece that we are working on okay the third piece is which is why i'm here yes today in hyderabad yeah. is that we are going to various state governments yes and telling them that convert yourself from being just a services uh, city to a product city and the first area we are giving them recommendations on through epic is how to do it mm-hmm. so we've got created a complete template mm-hmm. on converting various states from just manufacturing with no value addition mm-hmm. to manufacturing and making products mm-hmm. and designing products in india mm-hmm. with value addition up to 40 to 50% mm-hmm. today if you look at whatever we are doing in electronics in mm-hmm. india mm-hmm. is just uh, screw driver stuff yes you get a kit from china you assemble it in india your total value addition is some 6 or 8% yes that's not a good thing for this country yes so that's the direction yes. we are taking so all this you're talking about needs capability building needs expertise so yeah. how are you thinking about that very good point actually one of the challenges of this country mm-hmm. is that every institute in this country that teaches electronics mm-hmm. stops at teaching the basics mm-hmm. they teach beautifully everything about electronics but they don't teach you how to make a product mm. yeah it's a huge issue so we've gone to aicte yeah and we've said add a module for making products into electronics mm-hmm. last year we gave them a recommendation mm-hmm. to start btech in vlsi design okay that has got adopted mm-hmm. close to 100 odd universities mm-hmm. are now having btech in vlsi okay is the first time it's being done mm-hmm. in this country so these are some of the things that you have to do yes. to really create the capability yes. the skills to make to do designs yes. it's really missing today mm-hmm. and what we are t- telling every state is mm-hmm. that to create create design and startups mm-hmm. around an education institution yeah so the education institution teaches you how to make a design yes the startups pick up an idea and convert it to a product yes and design houses are offering design services to smes and large companies to say i'll come i'll design this electronic product for you yes this kind of concept we want to start in 5 6 universities in each state okay it's a long term plan yes. but you need to create an mit type of ecosystem yes. to be successful yes mit or stanford yeah. right yeah, yeah. 